Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today as we continue our week-long student-run conference study tips for the new year and beyond. Before we get into the presentation today, we have a few housekeeping items to take care of. So first of all, we would like to record this presentation. If for any reason you are concerned with or object to you being a participant in a recorded webinar, please send Liz a message now before we really get underway. Next, this conference is organized by student volunteers and presented through the Launch School community. As such, we will be following Launch School's code of conduct. If you have any specific questions about the code of conduct, feel free to message myself or Liz directly. But in a nutshell, the rules are simple, be kind and open-minded. The seminars this week have been quite popular and as a result, we had a ton of RSVPs. So to keep the presentation flowing smoothly, we'll be using the Q&A feature to manage all of the questions that you might have today. If you do have a question, please post it in the Q&A area and not in the chat. This helps us keep the questions organized and ensures that we can get to you. If there is a question in the queue that you also wanted to ask, you can upvote questions to give them a higher priority. Lastly, as I mentioned before, we're in the middle of a full week of sessions and there are some great sessions still to come. So here's a quick rundown on the week schedule. Tomorrow, Wednesday, January 6th at 5 p.m., Yulu is presenting principles of a 360 study wellness plan. Thursday, January 7th at 10 a.m., Jesse is presenting Journey to Mastery and Programming Fundamentals, Principles and Practices. Then Friday, January 8th at 3 p.m., Jose will be doing a lightning talk, Dangerous Intuitions, Three Common Intuitions That Make Learning Harder and What You Should Do Instead. And that's going to be coupled up with Liz presenting Study Reflection Stand-Up. Uh, both of those will take place in the same seminar. Next, Saturday, January 9th at 2 p.m., Julius is going to present Building Tacit Knowledge. And wrapping up on Sunday, January 10th at 2 p.m., Callie will be presenting How to Practice Problem Solving Alone and with Others. So that'll do it for me for now. With that, I'll turn it over to Mandy, who will discuss using a metacognitive approach to understand your own learning patterns and demo a few tools she has found helpful in her learning process. Mandy, take it away. Hi, everyone. My name is Mandy Chang. I'm so excited to be here today. Thank you for attending my talk. I will be speaking about metacognition and I will demo my study setup using Typera and Anki. So this is the agenda for my talk. I will do a brief intro about myself. Next, I will explain what is metacognition and how to apply it to your studies. Then I will do a quick walkthrough of a method on how to pick site tools that are suited for you. Finally, a demo of my personal study setup using Typera and Anki. All right, so a little bit about me. I studied nursing for two years, and later on I switched over to geography, graduating with a specialization in geographic information systems, also known as GIS. Fast forward a couple of years, I'm currently a computer science student and a launch school student in the JavaScript 210 course. So this presentation will be a little bit biased to my personal perspectives and previous experiences. All right, so what is metacognition? Metacognition is cognition about cognition, thinking about thinking, knowing about knowing, becoming aware of one's awareness and higher order thinking skills. What would this look like in practice? Metacognition is a form of active learning. So when we question our thought process, it allows us to learn actively rather than passively. Active learning requires engagement and it enables us to learn deeper it regulates our cognition and learning. So some of the questions we can ask ourselves when we're going through logical material is that, what are the important facts? What should I commit to memory? Do I find this interesting? Why or why not? 
If this part is a what, can I explain why? Are there contradictions? Is this challenging? Does this remind me of anything I already know? How do I briefly summarize this? These are some examples I pulled from LaunchWall's core curriculum. I thought these are perfect examples of questions that, that help us get into the mindset of metacognition. So we can pause and think for a moment when we read them. So the first one I got from a chapter from the intro to JS book by Launch School. And that quote is, that dis distinction is subtle. So stop a moment and think about it. And the second example is, ask yourself, what does our solution do differently than yours? How do you think we did it, in, did it the way we did it? This was from the primer on working on Ruby 101 and 109, small problem exercises. As someone who isn't learning programming for the first time, I reflect a lot on the material. Like I reflect upon when I first learned it, what's the difference between when I learned it then and now? How did I hear about this the first time? Was it in my classes? Was it in my internships? What did I learn before that's different than how LaunchGoal is presenting it today? All right. so. Metacognition doesn't happen in isolation. We need study tools to keep a record of the things we're learning and our thought process. Next, I will walk through a method on how to pick study tools that are suited for you. Then following that will be a demo of Taipara and Anki. Okay, so there are so many choices out there. Like it can be totally overwhelming to pick the right study tool for you. Um, the first point I want to make is to understand yourself. Understand yourself and what you need in a study tool. This is the most important step and why it's bolded. Nobody can know what's best for you. Like you are the person who will know yourself the best. And once you figure that out, like try writing down your needs. And then number three, read about the feature list of the study tools and whether they match your needs. Four, Remember, there's no perfect tool that is fitted for everyone. We're all unique and different. Don't be afraid to learn about what works for you and what doesn't. Five, after learning what you need, pick that tool that matches your needs and dive right into learning. Six, revise your toolbox later if it's really not working out. So here's an example for myself. So I need to take notes when I'm learning. I need a notebook that is minimal, that is digital. I can easily search through the notes. I can easily find and replace text. It is reliable in facts. I can add pictures or diagrams. It can support code blocks, syntax highlighting, and code formatting. And this part is super important to me personally. And the last part is that it needs to save to my local hard drive. So there's so many digital note-taking tools that are similar. Um, the solution I chose for myself is a free Markdown editor, Typera. Next, I will show a demo of how I use Typera. So before I play this video, I just want to briefly explain what it's about. So in the first half of the video, I will show uh, the folder structure I use to organize my notes, and it's in chronological order, order, the same order that Launch School teaches the material. And then in the second half of the video, I will demonstrate like opening one folder, which helps uh, with distraction, so I can only focus on like JavaScript material. And then lastly, I will demonstrate like using the sidebar to navigate through the file.
So now I'm just opening into the JavaScript folder. And I can hide and show the sidebar. You can click on one of the headings to go to that specific section. All right, so the next video is gonna demonstrate searching for a keyword global, globally within all folders. And then the second half will demonstrate searching for a keyword within just one specific file. So I'm going to look up the objects keyword. Now searching just within this one file. Okay, the last demonstration will be on editing. So the first part is search and replace text. Second, I'll show how to create a code block and it has like the auto syntax highlighting, auto indenting. Third, we'll be dragging in a picture and lastly, viewing and editing the markdown source code. find and replace all. So after dragging in the picture, you can also resize it. And if you want finer control and editing, you can switch over to the source code and you can see all of the markdown and edit from there. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of using Typera. I really like that there are so many keyboard shortcuts in Typera. It allows me to edit the text without using the mouse too often. It's really minimal and distraction free. It has a great setup for fast typing and speed editing due to how easy it is to move up and down the editor. Uh, just a side note, I actually have a tip on the next slide on how to edit text faster using both the Alt and Command key, uh, or Alt and Control in Windows and Linux. Okay, some of the cons of Typera. So you can't, I, I, you can create diagrams in Typera, but it's not the same as using paper or pen or whiteboard. It's just not as dynamic and free flowing. A second con is it's not great for drawing mind maps. So mind maps are essentially a diagram to illustrate how bigger ideas connect with each other. Another con is the notes in Typera will always be in a linear fashion, so it's always like top to bottom display. And lastly, just a personal preference, uh, it doesn't have Vim bindings. Okay, so this demo is to show how to navigate text a bit faster using Alt and Command on macOS. So you can move forward and backward one word at a time. You 
You can do the same by deleting an entire word at a time, backwards and also forward. And finally, deleting an entire line at once. All right, so moving on to Anki. I will highlight some of Anki's important features and show a demo afterwards. Okay, Anki is a free flashcard program with built-in space repetition. What that means is that it will test you at the optimal time when you're about to forget the cards you've learned. Studies have shown that self-testing or retrieval practice improves the retention of information. There's this really interesting research paper called A Systematic Review of the Testing Effect in Learning, which compares studying with and without self-testing. It shows that the students from all age groups had a significant improvement in the retention of information from some form of retrieval practice. I've put a hyperlink to the article, which you can read it later when I share the slides. So flashcards is one application of uh, this testing method and a tool to evaluate your understanding. In the long term, a good space repetition program will ask you roughly about 50 cards a day. Um, 50 cards may seem like a lot, but in reality, it's only 10 minutes of your day. Enough talk about Anki. I will demo some of the features now, uh, such as searching, deck options, and add-ons. All right, so in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to search for a card within a deck using keyword, and then I'll show how to search up cards using tags. So currently I'm in the JS210 deck. I search up slice and shows two cards that have that keyword. And I can edit it, add things to it. I can select multiple tags and search by tags instead. So it's searching JS or array. I could also change that to JS and array instead of or. Okay, in this next video, I'm going to demonstrate how to change the deck options of Anki. So the deck options is located by clicking on the gear icon and then the label options. So what deck options allow you to do is to adjust how many new cards Anki will show to you in a day and how many new cards it will ask you to review in a day. Like I would recommend trying the default out, but in the beginning, if it's really too overwhelming, you can lower that threshold. So steps means once you're learning a new card, I'll show you again in one minute or 10 minutes. So new cards per day, graduating interval, easy interval. And these are the maximum reviews per day. You can save the configuration as well. So you can actually put up to, well, over 9,000 reviews a day if you want that. You can also review up to 9, 000, over 9,000 cards a day if you would like that. So as you review more and more, the space repetition algorithm will multiply those days and show you the cards. Like once you click good, then it'll show you the cards later in seven days. And then if you review it again, seven days, it's good. It'll show you again later, a month later. And it'll adjust when to show you the card depending on if you clicked on good, hard, or easy. All right, Anki add-ons. So Anki has a really active community and there are a ton of add-ons. Uh, I'm personally 
quite a minimalist person, so I don't use too many add-ons to change Anki, but the add-ons that I do use are here on the screen. Um, they're mostly just for aesthetic purposes to make Anki look nicer, because I find Anki's core functionality is everything I need in the flashcard program. So the first two I wanna talk about is large and colorful buttons and color confirmation. So if you can see the picture on the top left, there's the again, good and easy button. So the large and colorful buttons just make those buttons bigger and with the red, green and blue color. And color confirmation means that once you click on one of those buttons, it'll transition to the next card, but it'll give you a pop-up to confirm you just click the good button or the easy button or again. Okay, the next add-on is mini format pack. So that is shown on the top right picture. Essentially, it's, it's an add-on that allows you to create bullet points, lists, or adjust the text to be center left or right. And but beside the mini pack, uh, mini format pack, there's a lightning ball and JavaScript toggle. So that is the syntax highlighting for code. And so when you've copied code to your clipboard, you can click on the lightning ball and it will paste the code you copied into that format, like I showed in, in the picture with the greet people function. And last but not least is a review heat map. So this looks like the GitHub commits, like it shows you a summary of which days you reviewed, how many cards and your longest streaks. Like I personally find this helpful and it keeps me motivated to continue. A few additional notes about Anki. So if, now that you've seen what Anki looks like, uh, if it's new to you, it does seem like a lot and it can be confusing at first, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, you can break down, break it down into small digestible chunks so, and perform using it like one task at a time. So if it's overwhelming, just try making one card and celebrate your success of making that one card. And then next try making 10 cards. After that, on the third day, try to edit the card. And then on the fourth day, try adding a tag. So step by step, learn gradually, adjust little by little, day by day. Um, we really don't want to overwhelm like the nervous system with too much at once. Okay, I'm going to highlight some of the pros and cons of Anki. First, the pros. So you can use Anki anytime, anywhere, like on your laptop or mobile. You can say your cards when you're waiting in line for the train or for an appointment somewhere. Creating the flashcards can be a form of active learning and retrieval practice in itself. So when you create a question for a card, try to answer that question without looking at your notes and then see if you got that question correct by evaluating yourself. Next, you can quiz yourself to see if you're actually recalling something or if you're only recognizing it. Recognition is different than recalling it by memory and Aki can help evaluate your memory. If you're making flashcards on Anki, these cards can be used again with another student. So if you have a study session, like you already have a set of pre-made cards uh, or pre-made questions that you can ask a buddy or a friend and test them on their JavaScript knowledge. And the last two, it's Again, it's easy to search cards like the demo and it has built in space repetition. All right, moving on to the cons. So some of the things that, okay, that Anki is not great at, it does not replace study groups. When you're studying with others, there's spontaneity, sometimes there's deep questioning and it's very beneficial to see problems in a different perspective. And also you get to make a whole bunch of new friends. And the third point I wanna make, like when you're studying Anki too much, it can start to become memorization. Like you may start to remember both the question and the answer before even seeing the card. 
Next, Anki really cannot help you practice live coding and breaking down problems on the fly. And that's why I bolded the last two points. Like with Anki, there's, there is a loss of spontaneity and like seeing new problems because in my opinion, like to becoming like a better programmer, I find it very beneficial to practice new problems like I've never seen before. Like breaking down a problem into smaller pieces is a skill in itself. Like programming isn't about getting one correct answer. There's multiple correct answers. Instead, the evaluation is the process of computational thinking and problem solving. Okay, so now that we've seen Anki and Typera, how can we use these two together? Uh, so we can do a lot of cell tests and self evaluation frequently, uh, create questions while note taking, you can test yourself while making the flashcards. And the notes are a source of truth. So when answering a question incorrectly, go back to the notes and check the answer. Explore that section of the notes a bit more and revise the card, like update the card if you need to. And if the notes are incorrect or if it's not too much, you can always go back to the curriculum and revise your notes as well. Okay, to summarize everything I've talked about today, metacognition can deepen learning. Understand what you need from a study tool. Typora is a markdown editor. Anki is a space repetition flashcard program. Retrieval practice helps with retaining information. It's okay to not know what you need at first. Learning how to learn is a process in itself. Okay, so this is the end of my presentation. Thank you everyone for being here today. Thank you to all the volunteers in Launch School. Now I will open the floor up to any questions. Thank you, Mandy. And just as a reminder here, if you do have questions, please go ahead and feed those into the question and answer section here within Zoom and not into the message chat. So now is your time to get those questions in. So if you have anything you'd like to ask Mandy, let her know. So we have a question queued up from Leah. She's asking, would you recommend any pre-created launch school decks that we can study from, uh, such as a resource deck link, possibly from other students? Hi, Leah, thanks for your question. Um, I think I would lean more towards creating the cards yourself and putting those questions in your own words. It can be a process where it's personal to you and then you might remember um, those questions a bit more or tie it to something you've already thought about previously. Thank you. And next question from Sina. They're wondering, oh, and they said, thanks, Mandy, and wonder what are some tools you tried and discarded and why? Hi, Sina. Thanks for your question. So when I started out with Launch School, so this is personal uh, to my experience, um, I started note taking using paper and pen. And then after a while, I was organizing everything with like with tags. But after a while, I started having a lot of notes. It was really hard for me to find things, especially like, for example, in the demo, I was trying to find the keyword object. Um, with paper notes, I felt like I had to look through page by page and see where those ideas I've written are. But whereas with digital, I found it was much easier to search things up. Awesome. And our next question, um, do you know offhand, offhand how Typora compares with Notion? Yep, so I'm not a Notion expert, actually, like I used it for maybe one or two weeks, but I just found, uh, it was just curiosity, but I found Typera meets all my needs already. So um, 
that's why I just stuck with it, but I'm not really too sure of all the features of Notion. And I think, Liz, we skipped a question above from anonymous attendee. Oh yeah, sorry, I'm just going in a different order. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no no worries. That one. <laughs> so what were the Anki add-ons that you used again? Okay, so the Anki add-ons, um, I will share the slides later, but um, top of my head, it's color confirmation, co colorful buttons, review heat map, mini format pack, and code syntax highlighting. I think that's it. Awesome. And from Janae, she is wondering what other tools did you explore before deciding on, I guess we just kind of asked this one, uh, on Taipora and Anki, but if there were any other tools besides pen and paper that you used? Um, not too much. Like I, again, um, I did the writing my notes on paper notebook and I tried Notion for a while, but I, I feel like the Taipora and Anki um, both met my needs, so I didn't really feel like I wanted to explore anything else, and I just continued using these two tools to dive into my learning. Great. Uh, next question is from Breno. They're wondering, I am particularly interested in the use what you know part of the title of your talk. Given your diverse background as a learner, nursing, geography, CS, did these past learning experiences help in your new learning journey at large school? And if so, how? Thank you, Bruno. So this is a really interesting question. Um, so a lot of the methods I showed in my presentation, I learned this through launch school because prior to 101 course, there was a whole lecture or assignments on learning how to learn. Um, and there was a mastery book. Um, there was a course by Barbara Oakley, Learning How to Learn. So I looked into that and uh, read about metacognition. And so prior to launch school, um, I didn't have great study habits. Like I was, I did a lot of rereading and highlighting, but I didn't incorporate as much self-testing into my learning as I do now. And I really found that was a big difference for me. Like I can retain information much longer. And um, another thing I wanted to add to that is, yeah, I have a background in nursing and geography CS. Yeah. So um, one of the things that I find learning in nursing and geography that's different than computer science and logical is that Launch school and computer science is much more applied. Like you have to practice new problems and make mistakes and practice that problem solving process. And I find it in, in courses like biology, it's a lot more like you read something, there's a question and there's an expected answer. Whereas in programming and mathematics, there's different ways of getting to that answer. Uh, and that was one of the biggest challenges and differences for me personally that I had to learn uh, and be more applied yeah, than I was used to. That's great. Um, the next question is from Joe and it's actually two questions so I'll ask the first one. Can you review Anki flashcards from all decks at once or can you only review individual decks? So you can review all cards at once. Uh, you can create a parent deck and then nest your, all your decks under that parent deck and just review the parent deck. You can also review cards based on tags. Um, there's actually an option to do custom reviews. There's a whole bunch of options and how you can ask Anki to show you cards. And the second part of your question is, also, at what point in the curriculum did you begin to learn Vim? I think I started in Ruby 130. Yeah, that's about when I started to dive into Vim. 
Very cool. I actually have a follow-up question on what you use it for in relation to launch school. The Vim code editor? Oh, you know what? I thought it was something else. Um, yeah, I guess for those of us who don't know. About oh, that, yeah. So Vim is, um, it's a code editor. It's on your terminal. And if you haven't heard of it yet, you can actually try it out by typing Vim Tutor in your in your terminal and there's um, a series of tutorials you can go through. Uh, it's just a very like lightweight editor where you have to use your keyboard to navigate so you don't use a mouse. Um, but there's also plugins for Vim that you can add to customize it more, but the bare bones, it's, it's very minimal. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and then for our next question, uh, from Anonymous. <laughs> uh, sorry if I missed it, but do you have a recommendation on using Anki every day? I've tried and I just keep forgetting, or I just don't really want to. I'd rather solve problems. Yeah, I think for the uh, space repetition algorithm to work well, uh, it's recommended to try it every day. Um, I miss days sometimes, so that's okay. And you can always catch up on another day or if the review count or the new cards that are being shown too high of a threshold, you can always uh, lower that. And over time, you'll make more and more cards and they build up. So what I do is I would delete some cards that I don't need anymore. Like it's just too much detail or I moved on from that course and I can change those questions to a more general generalized question instead of like a specific question where I'm asking examples for this topic. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. And next question is from Joey. Uh, how and when do you find yourself using uh, closed deletion with your flashcard, removing keywords, etc.? Right. So closed deletion, uh, for those who don't know, is uh, fill in the blanks. So an example I can think of is like if I want to name a specific method or uh, you can also use it for okay what are the falsy values of Ruby or what are the falsy values of JavaScript like something just really key key word specific, I would use fill in the blank. Cool, thank you. And from Austin, they're wondering, as a daily user of Anki and flashcards swaps, and as someone who wants to improve problem solving skills, have you found any more effective techniques for improving problem solving skills while walking? Um, for example, a verbal pedic process? Hmm. Um, I found that improving problem solving skills is doing more problems, doing more problems and problems that are, and Launch School is really good at this. Like they give you problems where it's just a little bit more challenging than what you're used to. So kind of pushing yourself a little bit, um, speaking out loud about the problem, teaching a friend, I think can be helpful and explaining it to like your grandmother, for example, someone who doesn't know about programming. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, from Kim, uh, they're wondering, do you know if you can upload flashcards to Anki from another app? That's a good question. I actually haven't tried that before. So I'm sorry, I don't know if you can upload flashcards to Anki from another app. Oh, no problem, Kim. Thank you. Um, and then next question is from Katarina. She's wondering, first of all, thank you for the great presentation. I have used, um, I'm used to working with flashcard apps, but after a while, I found it difficult to follow up with the routine, especially after a vacation or break there would be a lot of flashcards to review and it is discouraging. What would be your way to stick to the routine of reviewing your flashcards? 
Yeah, I can relate to that because I definitely had those weeks like where I took breaks and then I come back and there's like 200 cards. So um, yeah, don't worry about that. Like it's fine if you, you're on vacation or taking a break. Um, yeah, no, no worries. Uh, for a routine, um, I would say probably try easing into it. Like instead of every single day, try every three days. And then if that feels good every two days and then gradually increasing the interval, um, it's really hard to like when you're trying something new or building a new habit, it's really hard to kind of go from zero to a hundred. So take it easy um, one step at a time. Awesome. And from Wendy, were there any resources that you used to learn Anki? As you mentioned in your presentation, it could be a bit intimidating getting started with Anki and learning all of the features and add-ons. Yeah, there are a bunch of resources. Um, they kind of scattered all over the place. So I learned about the settings, I think through the Anki Reddit a sub forum and then there's a whole bunch of YouTube videos by medical students. It's really popular amongst medical students. So I watched a couple of videos. Don't remember which channel, but there's so many of them. Um, and that's how I learned Anki, kind of just piecemeal and uh, the resources are a ton, but it's just scattered <laughs> over the internet. Yeah. Those would be great to share in Slack too, if anyone finds a good link. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I actually don't have like a specific video or article where it's like how to get started, like a boilerplate with Anki. Um, it's just kind of mismatch of information I gab gather through different videos. Yeah. Cool. And uh, let's move to the next question from Leah. Do you have any tips for creating card content? Yeah, so um, for, for card content, I usually create cards for new information that, I, that I'm learning for the first time, um, but not for everything. Like if, for example, like variable scope is important and there are certain topics like throughout Launch School, they would even say it in their curriculum, okay, remember this, like this is an important topic. And then Oh, most likely later on beyond the assessment. So I would create some flashcards for that. And then while I'm creating it, I try to create the question and then do the whole like self evaluation, self testing, self evaluation thing to see, I just learned this material. Um, can I answer the question now and then review it again? Cool, that is great advice. Um, and then I saw there's a follow up from Katarina's question. It was an audience comment um, that Anki has an add on called free weekend or any other day that helps with um, kind of, I think, flow around vacation. And then let's do the next question from Rodney. Thank you for the presentation. Do you find it easy to switch study approaches, for example, moving to Vim? How long does it usually take you and how do you go about trying something new? So, uh, okay, so learning Vim. Um, yeah, when I switched to learning Vim, I, in those days, I, I just kind of felt a bit tired of staying launch school. So I was like, okay, I wanted to learn this. And when I was in RB 130, it was sort of perfect because there were so many practice questions. So I could practice programming in an editor because there's some courses like for example the networking one it's not a lot of um, it's more theoretical it's not as much programming and the second part is how long does it usually take me not too sure but I try to learn things gradually like I I've found if I do something half an hour a day and then the next day I do half an hour like I don't try to learn all at once in a big continuous chunk because my brain, my brain just doesn't work like that. I need to space things out. Like I need to forget and then remember later. So I, I always try to ease into things. 
yeah. Sweet. Um, and then we have two more questions. And the first one is, does Vim have debugging tools? Yeah, currently I don't use any Vim debugging tools, but I'm pretty sure there must be uh, some debugging tools out there. Yeah, like Vim has a, a lot of plugins. It's a very active community. Awesome, and then for the last question, many suggest you should just look things up, not memorize things when learning to code. Do you feel that remembering things is important for programming? Right, that's a good question. So I think um, in a, a subject like computer science programming, um, there's sort of like two portions. There's like the theoretical and then like the applied. And so we can't program unless we know our toolbox. Our toolbox is the syntax. So if we forget even the syntax of how to write a loop or that a while like the keyword while exists or for or some methods commonly used in Ruby, each map filter. Like if we can't remember that, it stumps us from programming. So I think there are certain uh, subset of information we need to be able to pull quickly from our memory. Um, but then again, like the whole like problem solving process or even tracing through code, we can't get better at that by memorizing the stuff you just need to practice. So there's that differentiation between, okay, this is the theoretical stuff we know. And then once we know that we need to apply that theoretical knowledge and practice. All right, that wraps it up on questions. Thank you so much, Mandy. And let's, uh, if you have any closing remarks, you can do that now. And then we'll hand over to Kyle to wrap things up. Yeah, thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure to present this talk today. And thank you for all the wonderful questions. Uh, I'll pass it over to Kyle now. I'm not sure if he stepped away, so I'll just close out. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. We have sessions coming up. Oh, it looks like he's back on. So, <laughs> Hey, guys. Sorry, I was having some microphone trouble. <laughs> yeah, Liz uh, did a great job. Again, thanks for everybody uh, to everybody for putting this all together. We do have more events this week. Um, so if you have not yet, please stop by the social network on Slack, check out the week schedule and drop us a line to let us know what you've learned from the seminars or what you might like to learn. Um, so with that, uh, thank you to uh, everybody for coming and have a great rest of your day.